Welcome back everyone and in today's video we're going to explore creating a material that um, I've been eyeing for over a year now. Uh, it's called the Tron material. Uh, this person, uh, Lariette, on YouTube uh, it gives you a tutorial how to go creating um, this material in Unreal Engine. Um, but he uses uh, uh, their like little node editor to actually do it. Um, we can get most of the effect done. Um, the only thing we can't do is the glowy part. Lost track of that spot I was at. That nice glow that comes from it, we can't do in this video because that is actually a post-process effect that has to happen after the fact. We have to set up frame buffers and everything else. But overall, we can build everything else other than that that actual shining glow um, in this video. So we'll just take care of that in this video. And in the next video, we'll actually deal with uh, building something called um, uh, a burst effect, which kind of, it all it is is we... We have to do a, a multi-pass where we we take the lighting, we blur it, and then we draw it right back into our scene. So, but like I said, that that's a post-process uh, effect. So we have to set that up um, in the video. So we're just actually going to actually work on building a shader um, that implements most of this um, right now, just for fun because I wanted to do this to this uh, this texture for the longest, and um, we're at a point we can probably start doing it. Uh, let's see. So go this way. <clears throat> so let's see. We got a simple. Uh, we have everything is pretty much simple. We just have we're gonna use our face um, cube, and we're gonna pass in our matte test shader that we're gonna we're using, which is called test underscore tron dot text file. Um, again, it's a very simple shader. There's really no uniforms um, that we're implementing. Ooh, excuse me. And um, our vertex shader is very simple. Nothing special about it either. Um, ah, this is, don't need this here. Just from a different video. Um, so we got we got a couple of settings, but we're not gonna that's gonna deal with that later. We're gonna actually do all the math, and then so you can come and understand what these are. So we're going to start with just getting a UV value, and it's outputting just the X. Uh, access of the UV value. So we're going to start off that way. So there we go. We got that, and this is what the, this is what it looks like right now. So the idea if uh, behind um, this effect is that we need to basically kind of do like an edge detection type of thing. Not really, you're going to detect edges, but you need to be able to kind of create a mask that defines the edges. So you kind of have to do everything in the X and Y plane. Um, I think that's in his. That's what he does in his tutorial. He does things as separately, but we're actually going to do it all together as one vec two ve um, uh, as uh, vec two operations of uh, doing everything as regular float operations, so we can actually do um, write less code. Um, and I also got rid of the sine wave. Well, we don't need to use a sine wave to actually produce it. Is it does he use a sine wave? I think he does. Um, yeah, I think he does use a sine wave. Uh, I can't remember now. Um, <clears throat> but we have a different ways to go up, up out the, to build the mask. So here's the first step. We got we got a simple gradient. We got to shift everything. We've done this, I think, in a previous video. Um, we got to shift the gradient. So we got to shift everything back down. Um, let's see, view word wrap, so we can kind of see it. So everything in the UV exists between zero and one. So we're gonna shift our everything from 0 to 1 to uh, negative 0.5 to 0 to negative 0.5. Um, that creates a, a gradient that looks like this if it wasn't. Oh, well, I'm double I'm doubling it up. So <clears throat> again, like as you see, we have more black. Um, everything here is probably at 0. Everything after that's all in the negatives. Um, but when we're rendering, we can't render anything under zero. We can't render anything over one. So everything gets clamped automatically. So that's why we get black. So this is the range of our gradients. It's negative 5, 0, and then positive 0.5. Um, so we can actually shift our negative into the positive by using an absolute. So this way, we kind of create a, a gradient that is between 0 0.5 
0 and 0 0.5. So that becomes our new gradient. If I click refresh, so we got half white, black, half white. Now we, so, so this is our x, and, and the y is the same thing. So if I were to show you what the y looks like, click y, refresh, it goes up and down. So we're doing both operations at the same time. So that creates a new range when it comes to gradients. Now we take one more step. We're going to shift everything back to where we want it. We want to be white, black, white. We don't want gray, black, gray. So if everything is from 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, just multiply it by 2. So this way we end up creating a range that is between 1, 0, and then 1 again. And there you go. And we can use this to create thickness. So if we want to make, let's say, so like this is our edge. That we're so this is, this is the thing about this. This is going to be our mask, and this is our um, the edges. We're going to color everything that's white. So that's a really thick white. You could, we can we can use this value to control how much that edge is going to show. So we can actually make the lines thicker. So by by uh, increasing um, the uh, the strength, or actually in this case it would be called edge thickness. So this is what edge thickness is. So by by two we make a perfect. Zero or one to zero to one gradient, and by doing this, all it is just making it greater. So we make, uh, like I said, it, it'll make a value greater than one, but it'll get capped at one. So that's why you end up getting a lot more white. Now the next step is that we're going to use a curve to um, control th uh, the distance between black and white, because this is kind of just a linear progression. So you want to use a curve. Uh, to kind of um, I don't think I don't think it's a bell curve. I forget uh, when you use a power. So we're going to take the UV value, and we're going to use a power function. And don't forget, this is a vec two, so we have to pass in a power function that uses uh, a vec two. So for x, we want to go by that, and by y, we go by, by five. So we're going to say, you know, whatever value UV is, we want it to the fifth power. So if I do that, as you can see, we shifted everything. Uh, it's more black and uh, less white. <clears throat> so we, this way, we're kind of controlling. Um, and in an example of from the Unreal tutorial, uh, that is called like edge sharpness. So we're controlling how sharp the edges we want. So, so we don't have to create how thick that we want. So we can choose how thick we want the white to be. And then from here, we kind of control how much gradient we have between white and black. So we can increase it. Uh, let me change this back to f change this to five for the next line. So so we're gonna use the same value, but then we can also do something called um, line, he called like edge subtraction. It's just to make the lines a little thinner. So here you go. So if we take that exact same value and then just subtract zero by three, we get less gradient. We also get rid. We lost white. We lost the white value in the in the process as well. Um, we lost the white, but we made the gradient a lot smaller this way as well. Um, and we can and we like we can make it even thinner by just using our sharpness. Uh, power. So we get a nice thinner gradient minus 3. Now the next step is we need to add the values together. Now we're going to add the x and the y positions together and we're going to clamp it to 0 to 1. So if we're going to display what the color looks like it creates this. We combined the, the X and Y position uh, colors. So this way, now we basically got the overall uh, shape of his um, Unreal, not Unreal, uh, his uh, Tron material. So we got that shape going on now. It's like where everything, like when it, when it gets close to the edge, everything blends in a lot better. 
Uh, and the final thing is that you can kind of control that little blending at the very end by just taking the just by multiplying. Um, and think this one's called glow strength. So if we add glow strength, we kind of make uh, everything back into white again. Remember when, when we did we did um, the edge subtraction, we lost the white, and by adding the glow, we we get the white back. Um, especially uh, at the very thin point points of our, our gradient, and especially the uh, the edges. <clears throat> so when the material is mostly done, the only thing left is really just to multiply it by a color. Click refresh, and there you go. And you got basically you have your Tron material. Um, and all this stuff can be simplified down. to just this. It's really just four lines of code. That's all it really takes to build the overall material. And here it uses different values up here than I, the one when I started. And it, like I said, it created a much, by just tweaking these values around, you can create uh, different types of effects. Or you can, you, can, you can sharpen the line, you can add more glow and things like that. Uh, I think if I do, you know, just 10 for sharpness, I get more of the gradient back. Uh, maybe use less glow, glow strength. I don't know. Maybe use like four. There you go. You get more of that gradient back. So you can sit there and tweak it like crazy, and um, and just build it as you know. Um, I think you can also make the line thinner. I think if I do that, click refresh. Ooh, no, actually it makes it thicker. Sorry. So it's line two. I think if I do that, the thirty. Get really thin lines. Uh, I guess I can do so. You get just that points. Uh, let's do maybe four. <coughs> so you can like really go, go crazy with it, like how thin you want the lines, how the gradients you want it to be. And I just, I just like how the edges kind of just like merge together very well. Now the only problem is he has that glow. <coughs> And that's not really used. The glow strength doesn't really ink make the glow better. Um, in all honesty, it just makes things a little thicker. I guess. Uh, let's see what the glow looks like again. So it just makes things wider. So it doesn't really glow. Um, what really makes see like if I dim the glow, it, it's it's more green and less white. So um, that actual glow effect that he's doing is a post. Uh, process effect. So the idea is that you have to set up a frame buffer, and you need to, I need to draw this scene twice, or I have to draw this cube twice. Um, I have to draw this cube once, and then the second time I draw it again, and hopefully just the green part only. So only draw just the green part in the in another frame buffer, and then the idea is that you go with that frame buffer, then you play a, a red uh, a blur on it. And then you redraw that blur onto the scene. So this way you kind of get that actual glow value, that actual glowing aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> in the next video, we're going to do that. We're going to um, go back to maybe we're working and building a, a smarter post-processing um, object that allows to handle uh, adding like a bunch of effects that we can just add at the very end of our scene. So hopefully in the next video, we can actually have that final glow um, like uh, the Unreal Engine. But for now, this is without post-processing. So this is what this is what everything looks like before you start adding all that extra levels of uh, complexity. So I think this, this is where it was pretty good. So like if I add a, the, the blur effect, this will look really great. Uh, I just, that's what's missing. So hope you had fun. Um, some fun dealing with shaders again and basically how to use gradients to kind of do this like edging on on the UV coordinates. Um, I don't know how well this works on other shapes, but it works really well, well on cubes. And if you have a shape that uses a lot of quads uh, or a lot of uh, quad shapes, um, uh, you probably can end up creating like a very cool looking effect. So uh, for now, we're just dealing with just making Tron cubes. Um, but... Uh, 
yeah, like I said, I've been eyeing this effect for, for the longest, and uh, it works out pretty well. So I guess I'll see you in the next video when we're going to actually start implementing more uh, post-processing effects and to actually complete this effect to make it actually glow. So see you guys in the next video.